and to the tram and towards the center of the aisle. We do want to make sure that everybody knew. Now, here to help me get this started, you know, you've already met Harvin, your driver, you've met me, your tour guide, but there is one more person I've got to introduce. You might know him as the host of the Tonight Show. You might know him from That's My Jam. Ladies, gentlemen, folks, friends, and moviegoers of all ages, may I present the one, the only, Jimmy Fallon. Dimitri. Arvin. You're the best. I love it. Even though Arvin. Most me fun. Wait, what? I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. All right, well, first of all, again, I don't know how to drive, so I got you covered for those five dollars, Art, and I'm not going to throw you into the tram, so to speak. Now, if you need any sort of guest assistance, folks, let's start with the screens and say warning. I also want to let you know, these screens that say warning, they're never, ever going to be in 3D. I promise I will let you know when to wear those 3D glasses. For now, they are not needed. They do not make good sunglasses, and I would much rather save you the headache if possible. Now, folks, if you need any sort of guest assistance or have a medical emergency, or let's say you drop something of value off the side of the tram or have any sound or video issues, just reach up and grab that red cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe for me to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay safe and keep all hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times, and remember to use that red cord above your head. If you need assistance, the studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull back your and the remains. You want to have those cameras out for some great photo opportunities, but please keep an eye on those cameras so they do not get wet. And finally, for your safety, those around you, please use selfie sticks or flash photography while on board the tram. With all of this out of the way, we are making our way down the Universal Studios timeline where you'll start to notice evidence that we're not just a theme park, we're not just a movie studio, we're practically an entire city. I mean, we have everything your city has, and fire station, police station, we even have our own unique zip code if you ever wanted to send us a postcard. But the big difference between our city and your city is that nobody lives here, and that has allowed us to cater to our filming needs for over a century now, 109 years to be exact. Nine years of one day. Uh, I didn't know Mr. Carlelli only started off with about 150 acres. Over these last century, you know, we've never stopped growing, expanding, and changing, which is why you see all of the construction to the left hand side. We're adding more place here, making more trouble, and more of the buildings where the filming actually happens. Our sound stages. Oh, what's a sound stage? Oh, last question there for a second. What are we doing here at Universe? What have we been doing for over a century? Well, folks, let's take a look inside the soundstage for all over the years. So all of the environments that you just saw on screen started from scratch, from the ground up inside these large, empty warehouse-like spaces that we call sound stages. And in order to transform these sound stages into the environments you know and love, well, folks, it takes an awful lot of hard work. Everything you see on screens has been intentionally placed there by a real-life human being. No detail too small to be customized. And that's why about 80 to 90 percent of all production to film with us here on the lot uses our sound stages. And if you take a look to your left-hand side, folks, now that you know a little bit of our past, the real question is, who's been filming here recently? And the answer is a lot of TV series. That's who. For instance, all these uh, trucks and trailers that you see to your left-hand side are a great example of a base camp or a base of operations. And they're all gathered here for the TV series Bel Air. That is the dramatic reboot of the beloved 90s sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And it now stars Jabari Banks and Holly Shulton. We've also recently been filming NBC's Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez alongside his real-life daughter, Mayan Lopez. Maybe you've heard of HBO's Hacks, starring Emmy Award winner Gene Smart, Apple TV series Loot, starring Maya Rudolph. All of the above. But here's the thing. I just 
mentioned some non-universal companies, companies like HBO, Apple TV, and if you heard about the new TED TV series from Seth MacFarlane and Fuzzy Door Productions, well, maybe you've heard of Fuzzy Door. Now, none of those three companies call our lot home, but that's not, a, that's not an obstacle when it comes to creating these stories and bringing them to life. In fact, our goal as part of a larger filmmaking family is to do just that. And while we're talking about recent projects here on the lot, I thought we'd take a look behind the scenes of Seth MacFarlane and Fuzzy Door Productions on the new TED TV series. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, Seth MacFarlane here, and I'm excited to share with you a behind-the-scenes look at my Peacock original event series, TED. It's a prequel series set in 1993. That means our skilled craftspeople had to build a high school, a house, and even recreate downtown Boston as a book back in the day using exterior sets and facades that you're about to see on the tour. But I should warn you, Ted is intended to mature audiences only. So grown-ups, tell the kids to go in the other room before you watch. Oh, come on! Now, whether these companies are on or off the lot, folks, there's a lot of planning that goes into bringing these stories to life. And a lot of the time, you know, there are companies that work right alongside us, and they can make those stories come to life in the buildings to your left, the production bungalows. These buildings house notable produ production companies such as Outer Banks Entertainment, behind the CW's Vampire Diaries. Maybe you're a fan of musicals like La La Land or Dear Evan Hansen. You might have heard of the Pot Production Company. They have the Wicked Bubble outside of their office to your left. And finally, we'll be passing the old Alfred Hitchcock bungalow, number 5195, where a very long-lasting legacy of psychological horror and terror was established over the years. You see it there. Uh, now, the Dina De Laurentiis Company currently works out of those offices, continuing that long-lasting legacy, adding to the work such as uh, Vertigo, Psycho, The Birds, with their title, NBC's Hannibal. Sorry, I just had a little brain moment there, folks. Let's take a look at a couple of those projects that were filmed in this area and produced out of Alfred Hitchcock's old bungalow. My name is Alfred Hitchcock. We all know what I'm asking. Now, of course, the Dina De Laurentiis Company has been heavily influenced by Alfred Hitchcock, but they're not the only ones. Let's check out a few more celebrity stories inspired by Alfred Hitchcock. Lou said you could move into that office. I said, no, I can never be in Hitchcock's office. That should be a shrine, a museum. Very exciting. Just to know that he was there and walk by and know he was in that office. Hitchcock has influenced every director. I saw Hitchcock once walking around the commissary. Hitchcock had his bungalow on the lot. I used to go see Alfred Hitchcock. I loved working with him. I highly respect him. He really understood fear and terror. The birds? That was a really scary movie. Just the birds? Oh, man, it has been within its like for the next 10 years. Psycho, of course, Vertigo, one of the all-time masterpieces. He's caught his master. But now that we've gone over some of the companies that work alongside us, let's talk about the actual work that goes into making a film or television show. Now, there is the phase of pre-production, all the budgeting, casting, costuming, making sure that transportation is arranged for your cast and crew. And don't forget something important like craft services. You want to make sure everybody working with you has enough to eat if they're on set for roughly 12 to 18 hours a day. But once all those details have been taken care of, then the actual filming can begin. And while a lot of that filming happens inside of our front lot sound stages, it can also happen to your left-hand side in our Universal Studios back lot. The sets that we're about to pass to your left-hand side are known as the Metropolitan Sets. These four acres can play really anywhere in the world. The reason being is uh, th these are not real buildings. It's obviously not a real city. Nobody lives there. And if you're curious to what these quote-unquote fake buildings look like on the inside, well, look no further than your screens. This barely their interior, this very liminal space allows our filmmakers to decorate the outsides of these buildings however they would want in order to bring a city to life. For instance, downtown Los Angeles for American Ninja Warrior semifinals. This is where they film every single year. Recent TV series like Quantum Leap starring Raymond Lee, a new TV series from uh, producer Michael Schur starring Ted Danson called A Classic Spy has been working over here alongside productions like Bel Air and of course the Ted TV series. But 
we are going to be moving on from our not so concrete jungle momentarily and as we do we're heading over to the real jungle of skull island from director peter jackson's 2005 king kong so before we head off the beaten path let's learn just a little bit about the wildlife shall we the universal tram is winding its way through a very rough narrow trail in skull island allowing the visitors a little sneak peek at some of the wildlife of Skull Island. In a sense, this is like a mini sequel, um, a mini continuation. We are just taking the, the Kong and Skull Island and the dinosaurs that we established in our feature film. And this is, uh, you know, another day, another incident on Skull Island, using the, the creatures and, and the character and personality of Kong as he appeared in the movie. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of Kong, and he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster. You know, he is an incredibly majestic, ancient, creature he's a force of nature he's old he's wise he's proud he's fierce and obviously he has a heart the most important feature with kong are his eyes kong's eyes are wonderfully expressive they're, they're, they're full of emotion his eyes are like a window into his personality and his heart he's had uh, an enormous number of encounters with his the T Rexes and the various dinosaurs. Okay, I'm pausing. Take a look to your left hand side, folks. Over down uh, on our London Square, there's some active production going on if you're able to see it. Beaten up, scarred, chewed up, and spat out by these dinosaurs at various times. He wears the scars of a lot of ancient battles. <laughs> It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like films that just take you away from your life and sweep up the picture. Kong literally does that. Like you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from you know, prehistoric times. So I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Skull Island, and it's great to have you along for the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island.
Automobiles of any sort, once featured on screen, are considered picture cars. So have those cameras ready. We have some very cool cars to check out here. And of course, a little bit of food goes Some great collections from Robert Zemeckis' Back to the Future trilogy. A real blast from the past here. We've got our selections from the Flintstones. Although, those aren't real cars, folks. They're metal frames covered in fiberglass foam and a little bit of paint. We've also got some great selections. Visiting our lot, one of those visitors is the Ford Anglia from Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets. We have both the trilogies represented from Jurassic Park and World. And from Jordan Peele's films, we have the Fry's Electronics Van from Nope and the Craw Daddy from Us. And that tank like vehicle, that's another visitor to our lot. It is properly called the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. But who has time for that? We like to call it the plank tank here on the studio tour because it's actually mostly made out of wood. The reason I bring up all these little details is because they are great examples of modifications. Ways in which our filmmakers change our picture cars to help them tell their stories, or just to make the vehicles a little bit easier to work with in general. But while I have you on the topic of anything and everything Jurassic... Welcome to Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. We're now surrounded by some of the original props and set pieces from the original trilogy. To your right hand side, we've got some empty cages, oh, some more picture cars, a boat from the Lost World Jurassic Park. And to your left hand side is the Mobile Lab. The same movie. And interestingly enough, the Mobile Lab is another picture car that is also mostly made out of wood. As are quite a few of these empty cages that we see around us. And I'm kind of relieved they're empty, not really noticing any signs of life. Because uh, the last time we saw the, the Mobile Lab on screen, you know. Oh no. Okay, everybody remain calm. I thought we were in the clear. I thought we were in the clear, but we're not. There's only one way to calm these beasts down, and it's with the power. <laughs> That's right, folks. The only thing that'll calm those dinosaurs down is the dulcet tones of an ABBA. This is how we're staying away. No, that's the Bee Gees. I was going to say we're staying alive. But hey, we didn't even have to sing to those dinosaurs, but we collected ourselves and we calmly made it through. I don't know. We might sing later. Just depends on how y'all are feeling. Uh, for now, though, I want to show you one more dinosaur attack that appeared on screen. Uh, Pausing right about now on this image on your screens because it's time to reveal a layer of movie-making magic and secrecy. Because that on your screens, 
That's not a real cliff. That is a parking garage that we passed earlier today in the front lot, and I didn't point it out because it kind of just looks like a parking garage. But even if we are able to customize the outsides of our buildings, like the insides of our sound stages, folks, it does not explain where on earth did all of that rain come from. Because as you well know, it never ever rains here in Southern California. And even when it does, it's, and even when it pours, it's still not exactly reliable. So rather than waiting for the perfect storm to pass us by, we will oftentimes take matters into our own hands. And this, well this is how we control the weather at Universal Studios Hollywood. This, folks, is what we call a practical effect here in the industry, meaning that all the ingredients for a realistic rainstorm are already here. Back towards Cars 3 and 4, you have a little bit of lightning from the strobe light, which is followed by BOOM! Thunder from speakers all surrounding us. Now, what really brings us to life, folks, is our top secret technology. We call them sprinklers. We attach them to the tops of our buildings. That's where all the water is coming from. Of course, again, the coolest part of this practical effect is that you have your own hard camera to start filming. Although technically there is a secret 30 degrees. Folks, you will need to make some new ones. About some odds. Congratulations on surviving the flash flood, folks. This might date all the way back to 1965, but more recently you might have seen this in Lady Gaga's music video, Judas. Or the movie Big Fat Lion, starring Paul J. Hawkins, Frankie Nunez, and Big Hawkins. We'll let those flash flood waters carry us through the rest of all this, though, which you might recognize from Paramount Pictures' Nacho Libre, or maybe even HBO's Westworld. But the cinematic world of the West, folks, that's where we're heading right now. Welcome to the oldest part of the Universal Studios lot. This is Six Points, dating all the way back to the 19 teens and 20s. Many cowboys have mosing on down their these streets, and many of them have earned their spurs. Even modern cowboys like Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt and Quentin Tarantino's night film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So I found us a cowboy to guide us through town. This town ain't big enough for the both of us, Jimmy Fallon. Well, I ain't going anywhere, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Now look here. Nice folks in this tram don't want no trouble. They just want to check out Six Points, one of the oldest sets on the Universal Line. I only just swear John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart shot a few of their westerns. That's right. That's where I aim to shoot for you. Looks like we got ourselves a Mexican standoff. <laughs> Lucky shot. And what's he mount up and get out of town won't get him good. Uh, well, I'll see you again, fellas. Or you can count on it, And get him. This is the beginning of We just have to talk it out, that's all. As we mosey on out of town ourselves, we're hitting the halfway point of our tour. So just a reminder for everybody to please stay seated during the entire tour. The studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, just pull that cord and then remain seated at all times. I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe for me to do so. As we travel over to your left-hand side is our beautiful Park Lake, which you might actually recognize not necessarily as a, uh, as a lake, but you might have seen it as the Amazon River in the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, even though the Gill Man came rather late to the classic monster movie cycle, we're actually heading back to where it all began. Classics like Bella Lugosi's Dracula, Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera, Lon Chaney Jr.'s The Wolfman, who, fun fact, I style my hair after. Uh, but as we head on into Little Europe, you might actually recognize it from something a bit more recent, starring Kristen Bell and Ted Danson. This was Neighborhood 12358 West. In a good place. Eleanor Shellstrom, undead. This location, the afterlife, come on. I've never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Maybe it's not all that bad. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Here in the daylight, little Europe is very charming. It's colorful, it's delightful, you know, 
It's even been featured in Disney productions like The Pirates of the Caribbean 1 and 2 and The Prince's Diaries 2, The Royal Engagement, the area between the fictional country of Genovia. All this to say, if you strip down Little Europe to its bare elements, you fill this area of black and white, add a couple of angry villagers, well, you have a recipe for a monster movie. Exactly like the monster movies that filmed your right hand side in our Court of Miracles. In fact, why don't I show you a little bit of Boris Karloff's Frankenstein, which filmed nearly a hundred years ago.
they were always saying, the shark is not working, repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around, we just waited and waited and waited. The shark was working well enough for a while there, and the people were going to so I would know the shark a lot. Real Amity Island, however, it is the real Cabot Cove for Murder She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury, where she played Jessica Fletcher, an Agatha Christie style murder mystery writer. As we head on up the road, folks, we're heading towards our suburban neighborhoods. To your right hand side is the Chicken Ranch. From Belly Park is the best little whorehouse in Texas. Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. And hey, if you're around my age and you survived the 20 swag era like I did, you might remember LMFAO's music video, Sorry for Party Rockin'. I know I certainly do. We're turning the corner onto Hollywood's hottest filming location. Welcome to Colonial Street. Recently, you might have seen this in the background of TV shows like The Voice. This is where I finals, up in their talk to their families before they end the new season's competition. And uh, if you're watching the new TED TV series, well, that light blue house to your right hand side might look familiar, or you might even just see it on screens. <laughs> How many we got? Well, let's see, we got 25. Fantastic. Do you think we're getting too old for this? But come on, Johnny, we're doing a public service. If a kid leaves the house in a less than stellar yeah, Halloween costume, he's got to get the bad news before he makes a fool of himself all over town. We're Samaritans. I now, this whole neighborhood might look familiar if you watched ABC's Desperate Housewives. This little slice of suburbia used to be known as Wisteria Lane. There is one thing everyone in suburbia can appreciate. It's a good name. I want to move on this in the basement. I know. So, like, I got my own name. Uh, for any of my Never Have I Ever fans out in the audience, over to your right-hand side, the yellow house with the green trim is Davy's house, our main character played by Matreya Ramakrishnan. As we head on out of this neighborhood, you guys might have noticed some of the lights that are around the neighborhood. Now, these are called ghost lights here in the industry. They're kept on set, and they're left on all night in order to uh, prevent any tripping over any wires that are left behind. But sometimes, you know, we're kind of a suspicious people. Sometimes we like to say it's to keep the ghosts that haunt the lock company. It's really just for safety, folks. Uh, and speaking of safety, we just reached the approximate 15 minute mark before the end of our tour. So just a reminder for everybody to please stay seated during the entire tour. The studio is private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull that cord and then remain seated at all times. But we will, however, be returning to the theme park shortly. As we return to the theme park, we are heading up Sil Steven Spielberg Drive. Uh, now, every single road on our lot is named after a famous contributor to the arts. We're about to pass by Janet Lee Drive as well as Kirk Douglas Drive. Um, but Steven Spielberg, while we're on that topic, we are about to pass by his sets of the 2005 War of the Worlds movie. Produced, our production designer was Rick Carter, and uh, it was produced by Paramount Pictures. Now, because the lot is constantly in a state of change, the War of the Worlds sets are under construction today, so we'll be able to see a side view of them as we head on up the road. In case you're not able to see them until it's too late, we'll take a look to your screens. We'll take a look behind the scenes with director Steven Spielberg and production designer Rick Carter.
Now here's the thing, folks. The War of the World sets. They do use a real-life airplane. That is a Boeing 747 that was dismantled and transported all the way here from the Mojave Desert. And uh, in addition to that, these sets have been outdoors for the last almost 20 years now, so they do need a little bit of TLC every once in a while. Uh, now, more incredible than all of this, as impressive as the set is, it only featured for like a little less than four minutes of screen time for the entire War of the Worlds movie, but it was well worth the effort. Now you might think, to buy a retired plane, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. But the thing about retired planes is they're really expensive. Uh, Paramount Pictures purchased the plane for that motion picture uh, for only $60,000. But you don't have any way to fly a retired plane, so that's where the problem comes in. In order to get the plane all the way to the Universal Studios lot, they had to... Uh, chop it into four different sections, attach it to semi-trucks, and then drive it about 130 miles here to the lot. But again, well worth the effort. Take a look to your left-hand side as we head on up the road. Now what you see is a great example of facades. This is the back of the houses for those of you who are regulars to our tour. You might remember the War of the Worlds houses on that side of the street. They're currently being rebuilt, but only the front part of that house is being built. That is a textbook definition of a facade. Other than the War of the Worlds, you might have actually seen these sets to your left hand side in uh, TV shows and community from Dan Harmon. This area had a failed Habitat for Humanity house in about season four. You might have seen it in an episode of America's Next Top Model, Nicki Minaj's music video Fly, and even Bring Me the Horizon's music video Follow Me, all of which have filmed over to your left. But other than Steven Spielberg, you know, we worked with a lot of legendary directors here on the lot. And our next set visit is from one of those legendary directors. We are heading up to the sets of Nope. Jupiter's Clean, from Jordan Peele's newest sci-fi thriller. These sets were designed by the brilliant Ruth Dion, who just had her work featured on the new Oppenheimer movie, which won Best Picture, Go Universal. And, uh, well, before we head into Jupiter's Claim, let's get a sneak peek from one of the stars. Kiki Palmer. What's up, studio tour? I'm Kiki Palmer from Jordan Peele's film, Nope. What's a bad miracle? Well, you'll have to see our movie to answer that one. Until then, I hope you enjoy your visit to Jupiter's Claim. Did you see a UFO in that cloud? Yeah. I ain't never seen nothing like this. Are you ready? What? Holy hell. No. 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 Hell no. No. As we head on up to these sets, folks, I do sincerely hope you enjoy your stay at Jupiter's Claim. We are, after all, heading in on one of our fleet's first electric trams. So it should be fine. It should be fine, folks. Uh, one, one more thing I want to talk about before we move on is suspense as a technique. Now, over to your left-hand side, we already talked about the War of the World sets, but one thing I haven't mentioned is uh, both on screen and here in person, the seats of the planes never had any bodies in them. That... That feeling, that sinking feeling of, you know, what could have happened, oftentimes is much scarier than what does. And that exact same technique is applied to Nope. Anyway, without any further ado, here's director Jordan Peele to guide us through Jupiter's plane. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's plane. A nostalgic, small-time, Southern California amusement park owned by former child star, Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the wicking well. Have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kids show. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? But a little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy,
to listen to that disembodied voice. That cowboy's right, it's time for us to say nope, no thank you to whatever's going on at Jupiter's Claim. And again, if you have not seen Nope, folks, I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic film. Now, we are, however, going to shift our gears and switch our lanes in just a few moments' time. But before we do, we're actually going to be meeting up with our Fast and Furious... Hello? Look, this might be more serious than I thought. What just happened? What? This is a secure line. Who are you? Hi. I'll tell you who I am, boy. I'm the reason bad guys use a nightlight. I'm the reason the boogeyman begs his mama to look under his bed. And I'm the reason you just lost control of this whole operation. My name is Special Agent Luke Hobbs of the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. And as of 16.9 seconds ago, I'm the man in charge. The hell you are. Let me clue you in on two things, sweet cheeks. One, there's a high-value witness from the Federal Protection Program aboard your vehicle. And two, an international crime syndicate led by Owen Shaw is honing in on this vehicle to take that witness out. Shaw's as ruthless as they come, and he'll stop at nothing to eliminate his target. Every living soul on this vehicle is in serious danger. Other than that, enjoy the ride. This is not your jurisdiction. It is now, Stink Pickle. I'm so tired of you, Stink. I step in it just whenever you feel like it. Mute him. Okay. Don't you. No, he's muted. I got it. That's better. We're moving your vehicle to a safe location until we have the situation under control. Until then, I want everybody to stay calm. Enjoy the ride. Take care of business. Hops out. Well, all right, this seems pretty serious, but don't worry, you don't need your 3D glasses yet, folks. You won't need them for a few short minutes. In fact, all I need you to do is keep your eyes peeled for some of our fast and furious traveling members. Their names are Roman Pierce. Lenny Ortiz, they're going to be helping us out with today's mission. Uh, hey, yo, anybody home? Roman? Hey, okay. just got here. All right, I got it. Well, listen, hello, people.
First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Um, escort this guy was out. Let's go, Cookie Puss! That ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm gonna know this time. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Man. It was on vibrate. Shaw sure traced us. Ops can't hold them forever. Letty? Roman, we're up. <sighs> Driver, move that vehicle. This is about to get real interesting. My Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. Roman, grab your truck. I need you and Lenny ready to roll. Without you, the audience, I do not know who we tell our stories to. So I want to say thank you to everybody here today. It's been a blast being your tour guide. And a special thank you to my annual pass holders. How you doing out there? Good to see you. Yeah, that's right. 
Your name and password will be extra special below. But don't worry if you're not yet.